Hi Olivia. Good evening. Let's just wait for Divine. And if okay na sa kanya sa part niya, siya na yung magsa-screen share. Pero if it doesn't work, ikaw na yung magsa-screen share. OMG, congrats sa inyo ni Shara. Grab it. Ang galing. Wait, ano na kong meet ka ata? So kapag naka-red po yung icon, is naka-on. If, uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, ate. Grabe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ang galing-galing. Sobrang nakaka-proud kasi ano, like lahat ng nakasama doon, I'm ay hindi mo lahat ng nakasama. Parang I mean, halos lahat ng elected na ano, girl reps about region. I'm from GPS. GPS. Totoo. Nakatuwa. Yo, sobrang na-amaze kami para mo. Hello, ate Grabe. <laughs> Didn't expect. Ay, galing talaga. <laughs> Ayan na po si Mami Shara. Hi, Shara. Pumuna ako ng kam. Nagde-dinner lang ako ng super, ng super saglit po. Go lang. Hi, Shara! Congratulations! Wait, parang feel ko ano, hindi ka pa. Hello! Sorry Ayan, po, I'm late. Hello, Divai. No worries. Can you try um, screen sharing, Divai? Wait lang. Saan ba siya? Okay. Wait lang po. Can I ask po when saan po banda yung screen sharing? Ito ba yeah, yung go lang. SRC. Okay. I wait wrong. Hindi pala. Yung tabi ng SRC, yung parang um, mini desktop or laptop icon. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Hello, walang laptop icon. Oh, wait. I screen share ko lang yung or I'll just um click lang. Yes, muna ako. Sige, screen share lang dito lang ako nagwo-watch. Okay. Shara Olivia, anong clinic niyo na button para makapasok? Para nahirapan ata si Ate Pao niyo to go in? Ito yung mismo pong ano, yung mismong title nung event. Tapos ayun ate, pumasok na ako, pasok na lang ako bigla. <laughs> si Mami okay. Shara po hindi po nakaririnig daw, sabi niya po. <laughs> Pwede pa sabi kay ano, kay Pao kung paano pumasok. Kasi ganun di ginawa ako. Uh, wait, Divine, I'll just send yung um, icon. Yeah, yeah. Ate Ate Francine, Ate Divine, is it okay daw po insert yung video ni Mami Shara dun sa opening kasi baka hindi nga daw po siya marinig kasi kanina pong nag-try siya pumasok, hindi po siya naririnig. Nasa ano daw po Ate Google, hindi ko po kasi ma-download Ate yung video ni Mami Shara kaya hindi ko po ma-insert sa Canva. Thank you po. For a while po, I'll see her muna. <laughs> Alright, thanks, Divine. Um, Olivia, regarding pala sa ano, opening remarks, so if you insert yung video ngayon ni Shara, how about later sa gallery walk? Makakapag-live ba siya or may pre-recorded ba siyang nakastore? Meron daw, meron po siya. Wait lang ate, check ko ulit. Ang... Wait po ate. Ate, ate, ate Franz, narinig po ako? Yep ate, meron po siyang pre-recorded video ng, sa part ng gallery walk. Pero try po rin po niya. Kasi hindi po siya naririnig kanina ate. Divine, are you, are you the one who's going to insert the video? Sa Pao? Ay, sa party po. Sa, pa, sa part ni Shara. Hey team, this is Joseph. From Juno. Hello. Hi. I uh, just wanted to confirm if you guys are good to go. I also hear that you guys are talking in Tagalog. Filipino rin ako. So we can speak in Tagalog if you want. Hi, that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're just experiencing... Um, a bit of a technical difficulty on the part of the other um, facilitator po kasi she can't seem to get in dito sa live um, platform for some reason. Although sinanap po namin sa kanya yung link to enter. Hala, ano nangyari? No, can you send me their email? And then I'll, I'll sure see what's thing. going on. It may be that they're not verified through the organization yet or uh, we just need to add her to the sessions. If we can have her email through the mod chat, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get that resolved for you guys. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Francine? Hi, Divine, yeah. Bump ko na lang siguro yung sa ano, yung sa screen share. Mm -mm. Ay, pwede, sorry, pwede yung pa-repeat? Yung for the screen, wala siya dito sa ano. Okay. Olivia, uh, can you take over the screen sharing? Ate. Ate Divine, may, may request lang po sana kami ni Mami Shara. Kung ano yun? Uh, pwede, <laughs> pwede daw po pa-download yung nasa gallery, ay, nasa opening remarks ate, and then pa-add dun sa Canva. Kasi parang, Mami Shari is having a hard time din pong mag-join sa Juno. 
Ah, uh, sure, sure, sure. Okay, wait. Pero... Yung sa ate. Ate, last po ate. Pwede mo mag-try ako mag-screen share po and then pwede pa tingin if nag-work siya ng maayos ate. Sure, sure thing. Thank you ate. Yup. Ito, Hi, Sir one. Joseph. Were you able to access the um the message I yep. sent? So I have uh, I have the email. It's the PB. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, right. Uh, you, you email. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you so that's much. Right. Hello. Yes, you be the one. Or yeah. Okay, that's cool. Let's see. Okay, so this is an account already. So what issue is she experiencing? Is she not able to get into the platform or into this session? Yes, this particular session. According okay. to her, po, parang, um, like what we did was when we entered the platform or when we entered Juno, was we click program and then we'll see the mission nutrition part on day two and then we click that. That's why we were able to enter. But for some reason, um, the, the um, other facilitator, which is Pauline, tried to enter po pero she can't seem to enter even though she's clicking the same tab or the same um session title okay give me one so is my screen okay po i'll try to play the video po of mami shara Hi Olivia, Olivia. What's showing on our screen is yung parang pang um the one with notes. Can you ah, okay, share your screen from ano Canva directly? Yung parang um yung tatlong tabs or uh, tatlong buttons, and then there's like share screen or present instead of sh sharing with the notes. Ate, wait lang. Thanks. So here's what I did. Uh, I went ahead and just granted her. Tagalog na lang ako mas parang mas madali. Um, <laughs> no, it's just I barely ever get to speak the language, so I'm like, all right, this might be a good practice for me now. Uh, so inad ko na yung panel sa kanya, so she should have access to this session now. Uh, if you ask her, if you have her contact, can you just ask her to refresh her page? And then kind of go through the same process as well. Click on program, click on day two, and then go into this one. She should be able to get in. All right. Thank you so much, Po. Yeah, you're welcome. And then I'll stand by here until she gets in. Um, just to be sure. And I also want to advise her to, because what I did, what I, what I had to do was give her access essentially as like an, uh, an admin just so that she can get here. So I just wanted to, to let her know that her account has that attached to it so that she doesn't um, go into the other sessions and kind of speak on it, which I don't think she will, but I just wanted to mention that to her. All right, I sent her a message already. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello, Ashley. Hello, everyone. I'm just making sure we all got in, but Joseph's here doing the same thing, so. Um, <laughs> and he's probably better at it than I am. So, uh, just hello and thank you for being here and appreciate you all. So perfect screen sharing is working. Fantastic. Um, we'll be around if you all need anything, but again, thanks so much for being here and presenting and we're really excited about this session. Thank you so much, Ashley. We're also looking forward to facilitating this session and meeting a lot of the participants. They're really excited. So um, I'm glad you all feel that. So I will hop off and let you all do any kind of last minute prep you need to do. But thanks again. Yes, I'll try to play the video if it's okay. But all right. I'm calling via the group chat. So maybe you might be surprised someone's calling. I'll just call, I'll not talk to Is it playing, po ate? Yeah. Thank you, ate. I don't 
this video is not playing pa lang po ate. Ate Devin, have you downloaded and upload the video to the Canva po? Yep, I'll just paste it on right now. Okay, ate. Thank you, ate. Mami, Shara, hindi ka po talaga naririnig. <laughs> Try, nyo, try mo po sa phone. Mami, hindi talaga nalilinig. Or baka nakapit ka kaya? Dapat nakared yung icon ng audio, ma. Olivia, nakalak. <laughs> nakalak, hindi ako makapag-pay. Okay, anak. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah, sige, ate. Mami, Shara, I can't hear you po. <laughs> Hello, Kenny's Farzana. Hi. Good day. Hi, Miss Kenes. We can't hear you. I think um you're still on you're still on okay. mute. Can All you right. hear? Me? Yeah. yeah, it's working now. Hello. Hi, uh, I am Kanis from Wex. I will be moderating the Juno chat box for you. We have another moderator who will be moderating the uh, YouTube chat box. So I wanted to ask if you want me to read out the questions for you, or you yourself is going to read that. Hi, Shara. Shara, hello. Can you uh, call your Ate Pauline and explain to her how to enter the platform? She's still having some problems entering it. Thanks, Shara. Bia, can you check if the video is working? I already paid Shara's video. I'll check. Ate, ayaw niyo pa din po mag-play. I'm trying to click the button. I request both of you to use a headphone for a better sound quality. Yeah, can you refresh your Canva, please? Or, I don't know lang if okay siya. Nagpa-play din siya sa akin. Sure thing, ate. Wait lang po. <laughs> Refreshing it din po, ate. Divine, at the divine, ayo nyo pa rin po. Wait, I'll share my screen and I'll show you what is happening on my Canva right now on Mami Shara's videos. Video. Go lang, Olivia. Ate, eto, naglo-loading lang po siya. Kento lang po siya, ate. Oh my, wait lang. Parang uploading siguro. Yes, ate. Ay, baka po. Bakit para bigla kang humina yung volume mo, Olivia? Is it my, ano ba? Or... Ate. <laughs> okay na po. Okay na po yung sound, ate Divine. Or... 
Alam ko yung mahina ba? Sa akin ba? Or... Wait, at I'll, I'll change my headphone po. Thank you. Sige, okay. Uh, am I audible? Uh, can anyone please respond? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, Kenneth, is it you? Is talking? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was requesting all of you to please use headphone when the session is live for a better uh, sound quality. And I was asking if you want me to uh, ask the question from the uh, chat box or you yourself is going to read that. All right. Um, thank you for the uh, um, suggestion, Miss Canis. All right. I will ask Francine because they will be the one to moderate our session for tonight. For a while, Miss Canis. Mm -hmm. more thing if someone raised their hand would you like them on stage to ask the question with their camera on hello can it? Uh, if any participant from the chat box raised their hand and want to ask question would you like them to come on stage and ask the question for you hey hello everyone Apologies, I wasn't able to reply that quickly. I just had to deal with a quick technical problem, but now it's all right. Hello. Hi, hi Francine. Um, hi, so Dota. two questions. Hello, two How's questions here. Uh, first, I want to make sure that your other speaker is good to go. So do we have a word on Pauline yet? We are currently contacting Pauline. One of our facilitators, Shar, is on the call with her on Messenger. Okay. And hopefully we'll resolve it just before it starts. But um, if not, we have an alternate plan, which is to ask one of the facilitators, um, Divine, to step in as the other host. Look at you, UP kids. Always prepared for things. That's awesome. All righty. Uh, well, if anything happens, um, we're here. Uh, we can, you know, I'm happy to hop on a call with uh, Pauline if needed. I can send her a Zoom link. So just keep me updated on anything. Uh, I'll drop my email here. So that, oh, there she goes. All Perfect. right, uh, here's Pauline. She made it. Okay, so you guys are good to go with five minutes left to do your last coordination. Candice, I think she has a Hello. question. So Candice is the moderator for your team. She has a question for you guys in regards to how to handle questions. Um, so with that, I think you guys are set to go. Candice will take care of the rest. And you all enjoy, man. You guys got this. Thank you so much. Yeah, and hello, Candice. Bye-bye. Francine. OK, how would you like to be, the questions to be handled? Uh, you want me to read that, or uh, you want me to present that on screen? Um, it would be nice if you could read it. And also, um, since during the event itself or the session itself, me and Pauline will be the main um, speakers or like the host for the event. So the other hosts, um, Olivia, Shara, and Divine will also be monitoring the chat and they'll try to respond as much as possible to the participants. Okay, all right. And Thank if you can, uh, okay, one more question. If anyone raises their hand and want to uh, come on screen to ask their question, should I take that? Yeah, sure thing. That would be great. Okay. All right. Candice, um, can you have a quick request for um, yes. participants who might raise their hand? Can we limit the number of participants to yes, about yes, five course. maximum? Okay, sure, sure. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, Francine. Hi, Audible. With the, um, Hi. With, the question, with the questions from YouTube, would you like me to just put them in the, the Q&A chat? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, Thank great. you so and much, Melissa. That's okay. I have your the link to your slides, which I'll share with people on YouTube because sometimes they struggle to see it from the Juno platform. 
Yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Melissa and Canis. I can't express how much you've been so helpful in facilitating this session also. Well, good luck. I hope it goes really well. Thank you so much. Hi, Pauline. Can you turn on your camera? That's all right. Hi, uh, Devai. Oh, yeah. Francine, I will be not on screen when the session is yeah. start, but you can contact me in the board mm. chat, okay? All right, great. Oh, thank you so great. much. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Pauline, is your camera on? Hi, Pauline, is your camera on? Or can you turn on your camera? Hi, Divine, are you there? Divine? Divine, yeah, worst case scenario. Okay, yeah, Pauline, you can can you turn on your camera, if that's all right? Hello. Yeah, hello, Pauline. D Divine? Yep. Yeah, can you... If Pauline doesn't come back in two minutes, can you step in as one of the hosts? Okay. Can you keep your video open so that... Um, we can keep in track with everything since we only have two minutes left. Oh, no, man, I'm taking my dinner. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, two minutes left, everybody, and we can do this. Um, for you just like how you practice and a little bit of improvisation, but it's going to be all right. So, um, Shara, can you... Coordinate with okay, Pauline's here. Hi, Pauline. Everything's all right on your end. Hi, Pauline. Um, is your is your mic okay? Wow, are you there? Hi, Pao. Okay. Pao, are you there? I'm um, Divine. Hello. See. Um. Okay. I Hello, Pao. Are you there? Okay. Since we're down to about fifty seconds, I think. Um. Pao's not able to open her mic okay no, Divine, I think I can can you hear me, Paul? yeah i can hear you divine yeah. i think we have to do the second plan Pauline, are you able to open your mic uh francine can you hear me Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I can see Sarah has two tab on screen. Can is she joining with two IDs? No, mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. Or is uh, is that something she's presenting on screen? Oh, yeah. I think Shara's the one. Shara, you're going to present something on screen. Well, again, at this. Okay, and now I we're live. I can see two tabs apart on screen. I will use two accounts at it because my other device is not working for me. Hi, Pauline. Hi, Francine. All right, I think we're now ready to start for our session today. 
Welcome to this exciting session on Mission Nutrition and the Global Youth Summit at large. Some of you are joining us through the Juno platform and many more are joining through the live broadcast and multiple social media channels. A warm welcome to all of you. So before we kick off, a bit of housekeeping. Number one, please note that this session is part of the Global Youth Summit. So we strongly encourage you to explore other sessions in any one of the three tracks per day of the summit. Number two, by joining this session, everyone who will have the opportunity to speak consents to their image and audio being broadcasted on different social media channels. Number three, by participating in the GYS, you have agreed to behave professionally, respectfully, and be culturally sensitive towards other people. To promote the principles of respect, diversity, and inclusion, as well as to actively prevent and not engage in abusive behavior of any kind that leads to any harm, prejudice, discrimination, or adhere to these principles or summit's code of conduct, you will be removed from the session and potentially banned from the entire event, and the organization that nominated you will be notified of your actions. Fourth, we have a safeguarding team moderating our interaction on the Juno platform, the live broadcast chat function, and all social media channels. Fifth, should you at any point feel unsafe or witness concerning behavior, please reach out by sending an email to safe at globalyouthmobilization.org. You may also get in touch with our support team at the virtual help desk. All information emailed to the, to the email address virtual help desk will be kept private and confidential. For our mission nutrition session today, we're going to learn more about COVID-19's implication on adolescent nutrition. But more than... Yes, we're going to have some fun activities in this session. Okay, with us. And let's learn what one together. I am Mary Divine de Villiers. And I am Francine Prades, both from the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, and we're your hosts for today's breakout session. To officially begin our session, let us listen to Shara Patria Pascual for the opening remarks. Yes, Shara, hello. So thank you, Francine, for that. And I'm also interested. I am Shara from the Philippines and the World Association of Girl Guides. I'm um, to give you a glimpse of today's second day celebration of the Global Youth Summit. Our session is set. As most of you may or may not, the largest gathering in the Last year, we met the Big Six Youth Organization, namely World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, World Organization of the Scout Movement, Young Men's Christian Association, World Government of the Christian Association, the International Federation of Sorry to interrupt, Sarah. You are not audible. Francine, can you hear me? Hi, Canis. Thanks for the heads up. Yes, I think. Uh, 
there's a bit sorry. of some technical yes, sorry, it's not um, audible. can you please tell I'm her sorry. to refresh and join again all right thanks Janice hello Shara all right there you there you go our summit consists of three plenary sessions in high property among these numbers, we call it in a session that will mention the importance for a healthy lifestyle, especially in times of pandemic. Our 90 minute session will be on new learnings from our honorable speaker from the World Health Organization and from your facility from us. Without further ado, let's get this session started. Thank you, everyone. So didn't that hype all of us up? So thank you, Shara, for dynamically delivering the opening remarks. At this point, we are going to watch a video tackling the effects of COVID-19 on the global youth. While watching, you may reflect on the unprecedented year that has been. Please note that the video we are about to watch do not belong to us, and there are no copyright infringements intended. obviously not the same for children everywhere, but some of them are lucky. Digital offerings allow them to keep learning virtually during school closures. However, it's not a system without flaws, as one family here in Germany has found out. This Berlin family is using smartphones and flip charts as they try to organize daily school life during the coronavirus pandemic, using messaging services, video games and education apps. It's an unusual situation for both parents and children. Of course, we have concerns. Our biggest fear is that they will become dependent, that they won't be able to stop playing or watching videos. We're also worried about content, what games and apps use. The family has imposed rules. Every evening, the mobile phones have to be put away. Also, the children may only install apps once their parents have freed access using the parental control function. Time using the phone is limited to two hours. The parents also monitor this using an app. Because of digital learning, the eldest daughter was often online for lengthy periods. At times, I found it a bit annoying to be stuck at my computer the whole day, or half the day. I was home alone for lengthy periods because my parents weren't there and my siblings were in emergency childcare. But it was good not to have to walk all the way to school, and I could sleep in until 7 a.m. Her sister first started using a smartphone during the coronavirus crisis. Julius Hassemer teaches courses for young adults on how to use smartphones and other digital tools. In his experience, children can learn a lot this way. I think it's more important that parents try to understand rather than prohibit. If you know what your children are doing on the internet, what they might be afraid of, what they don't understand and what confuses them, then they can better understand what their children want, what motivates them, and lead them in productive ways. The family has discovered a cooking app. Today, vegetarian burritos with guacamole are on the menu. But no smartphones at the table during the meal. Today, school children will eventually grow up and face adult-sized problems perhaps bigger than the ones we've ever known. Have a look. Vast sums are being spent to bail out ravaged economies. Hundreds of billions of euros in Germany, in India, in China, and in the United States, trillions. 
governments have to borrow most of this money. Who will pay the debt back? Today's elderly or today's young? Much public debt only comes due decades later. That means today's young will carry the can in many countries. There's already a shortage of jobs and training opportunities. Higher taxes and spending cuts are quite likely in the future. So are today's millennials the main losers in the coronavirus crisis? Not necessarily. They might also stand to benefit if investment is focused on shaping the future. Education. Digitalization. Environmental protection. If firms are kept going through the crisis, jobs should become available again. Holders of government bonds should eventually get paid out. Today's young will inherit public debt, but some of them will also inherit government bonds. So members of the same generation will be paying each other back. If an economy grows strongly, repaying debt won't be a huge problem. Protracted crises, by contrast, would be a disaster. Inflation, bankruptcy, mass unemployment would be more worse for coming generations than inheriting a pile of public debt. Professor Ludger Grossman is the director of the IFO Center for the Economics of Education, and he joins us now. Professor Grossman, you're currently researching on the effects of the coronavirus crisis on the younger generation. Are you worried about the current lack of classroom education for many school children? I certainly am. So worldwide, more than one and a half billion school children uh, are affected by the school closures. Um, uh, they are meant to do their school work at work right now, but we actually know very little about how that's working. I mean, how many of the children have regular online instruction, or how many are just left on their own? Uh, for Germany, we have just done a, a major study where we uh, surveyed more than a thousand parents uh, about how their children were actually spending the time during the school closures. What we learned is that the time that students spent on school actually half during the, during the corona times. 38% of students in Germany studied for at most two hours per day during the school closures, uh, three quarters or uh, at most four hours. They actually spent much more time on, on TV, uh, on, on computer games, on mobile phones that increased from four hours to much more than five hours now. Weaker students were particularly uh, affected and replaced learning with passive activities. We also asked what the schools were actually doing during those times and actually 45% of uh, students, even in Germany, never had any shared online lessons um, uh, during those times. Only 6% had it on a daily basis. And even less often did students have individual contact with their teachers. And that, of course, is not a very uh, good way to learn. It's not a good way to learn, as you say. And can you already tell us what kind of hit to the economy we will experience if today's children don't receive the kind of comprehensive education and training they will need later on? Well, research has shown that... Wow, that was a very moving video. I'm sure a lot of you have struggled with viewing it all throughout, especially with um, the size of the screen. But don't worry, you can also enlarge the screen, as you can see in the Q&A or chat box, where you can, um, Kenise, one of our moderators, shared with us where you can expand the screen by clicking the expand button on the right side of your interface or your gadget. Now, that was a very moving video, as I mentioned earlier, and the concerns mentioned ranging from the complexity of the current learning setup, especially on the remote learning setup, to the economic impact of the pandemic are indeed valid and present unique challenges to our generation. I am sure that there are more thoughts and emotions than one can imagine right now. Now, we want to know how you felt after watching the video. Please do not hesitate to use the chat box, or you can also comment your um, learnings, reflections, your emotions, or your thoughts in the YouTube platform. And send in these insights about what we've just seen a few minutes ago. Now, we'll be looking at what you're typing, and we really want to hear your opinions about it.
how about you, Pauline? What was your initial reaction upon watching the video? What did you feel? Well, um, that was a really too much overwhelming for me, you know, but um, that's why we're here right now, hand in hand, because we carry with us hope. So we're here to amplify our voices and actions towards a more sustaining, healthier world. Definitely. We are here braver and stronger than ever. And at this point, acknowledging that these experiences are valid and that this has been much more than an overwhelming year, but it is a challenge in itself. We would like to introduce our facilitators and the speakers for this session. So first on our list is, of course, my co-moderator for this session, Francine Prades. Francine is a young women ambassador for the Asia Pacific region and an advocacy champion of the Girl Powered Nutrition Program in the Philippines. She is passionate about addressing cross-cutting issues affecting women and girls by increasing visibility of women in STEM and bridging the gender gap in nutrition. Thank you so much for that generous introduction. And you know, you've heard from her earlier during the opening remarks, we have Shara. Shara Patria Pascual is a peer educator on the Free Being Me, an action on body confidence program, and an advocacy champion for the Girl Powered Nutrition Program in the Philippines. She's also one of the ambassadors of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts in the recent International Women's Day celebration. As an advocate, she works on raising awareness and campaigning on hidden hunger in her country while amplifying the calls to increase self-confidence among girls and young women. She firmly believes that understanding proper nutrition and good health is vital as much as building body confidence. So our next facilitator is Mary Divine de Villa Luna. Divine is a WAGS ambassador for the Europort Global and an advocacy champion for the Girl Powered Nutrition Program with the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts in the Philippines. She advocates for gender equality, body confidence, violence against women and girls, and nutritional issues. She has acted as a speaker and facilitator for numerous events on women's empowerment in public life. Currently, she is working on initiatives and campaigns to address the issues concerning girls and women, and she is committed to educating herself on issues and knowing how she can best take action. Our next speaker is Narendra Andrea Mahefalison, who is a girl power nutrition and plastic tide turner advocacy champion in Madagascar. She delights in empowering girls by giving them the opportunities to learn, to be inspired, to find themselves, to make their voices heard, so together they can address issues that are affecting them. She advocates for better nutrition in order to break the cycle of chronic malnutrition in Madagascar because she believes that if girls and women are healthy, they can achieve more. She wants an equal world for everyone, where everyone can their fullest potential and take action to build a healthy and better world. We also have Olivia Sabado with us. Olivia is a Together We Rise advocate and an ambassador of the WAGS for the latest International Women's Day. Currently, she is also one of the advocacy champions of the Girl Powered Nutrition of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. She ascends for a safe, secure, and healthy world for all as she continuously and actively works on initiatives and campaigns to address violence against women and girls, as well as nutritional issues, especially heat and hunger, which is prevalent in the Philippines. She envisions a world where everyone is heard and each is represented well in order to eliminate gender parity in all facets of our lives. And Lastly, my amazing co-moderator in this virtual learning space, we have Pauline Seralde. Pauline is an advocacy champion for the Girl Powered Nutrition Program of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts and was an ambassador for the 2021 International Women's Day. She is working with grassroots organizations to advance children's and women's rights, especially in indigenous communities and to win social justice. She also advocates for proper nutrition, especially among girls and women who since time immemorial have been disproportionately affected by emerging societal issues. 
Thank you very much, Francine, for that very kind introduction. So at this point, allow me to introduce our outstanding speaker for this session. So Dr. David Nabarro is the co-director of the Institute of Global Health Innovation at Imperial College London and support system leadership for sustainable development through his Switzerland-based social enterprise, 4SD. Since January 2020, he has worked as Special Envoy of the World Health Organization, Director General on COVID-19. He secured his medical qualification in 1974, has spent five years working as a community-based physician, mainly in Southeast Asia, and since then has had assignments in over 50 countries where he worked with communities and hospitals, governments, civil society, universities, and in the United Nations programs. David was head of health and population and director for human development in the UK government, Department for International Development in the 1990s. From 1999 to 2017, he held leadership roles in the UN system. He worked on disease outbreaks and health issues, food insecurity and nutrition, climate change and sustainable development. In October 2018, he received the World Food Prize together with Lawrence Haddad for their leadership in raising the profile and building coalitions for actions for better nutrition across the sustainable development goals. Brincy, I hear you did. Hello. Everyone, let us warmly welcome Dr. David Navarro, our keynote speaker for this session. I'm a public health doctor, but I've spent the last 15 years really immersed in food and what we call food systems. And I find there are some very important relationships between COVID and food, and that's going to be my focus. So, let me just start with my analysis of where the world is in relation to COVID. And I'm going to offer you five words. They begin with food. First of all, pandemic. Then, purpose. After that, people. Fourthly, public health. And fifth, program. And then, as I talk about program, I'm going to go in, in greater detail to the nutrition issues. First of all, pandemic. Well, I don't know whether you've studied the figures that show numbers of people with COVID that are reported to the World Health Organization each day. But I'm going to tell you that in the last week, more people in the world were reported as having COVID than... That is an enormous number. And I want to stress, therefore, that nobody should imagine that this pandemic is anywhere near extremely dangerous virus. It's very easy to underestimate. Continues to move all over the world with spikes of disease, the surges, and then turn into swirling outbreaks with people getting very sick hospitals being filled up, and governments being forced as a last resort to impose significant restrictions on people's movements in order to try to stop spread. And that's what's happening. And it's particularly intense in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, as well as in countries in Latin America, particularly Brazil but also some of Brazil's neighbors. And the reality is that these spikes of disease are occurring without any kind of 
seasonal pattern. There's a period when there's not much disease and then suddenly numbers of cases build up and you get the very extreme situation that we have in India right now. So this is the pandemic and what to do about it. Well, my second point is we should respond with purpose. I'll tell you why. Now, this virus is not going away anytime soon. And the fact is that the pandemic will continue to move around the world. There's no hope of being able to protect people everywhere through immunization until well into 2022. And that requires us to be lucky with supplies of vaccine. And instead, the purpose has to be to ensure that as this virus continues to be a constant threat for humanity, collectively, we can respond. And we can respond in ways that are fair. We can respond in ways that are looking forward. And we can respond in ways that are rapid. Because all over the world, all people everywhere are experiencing incredible challenges as a result of COVID. They're becoming poorer. Their lives are becoming more challenging. And given that it's poor people being affected the worst, it's absolutely essential for forward responses to be fair. And that's the purpose. Fast, forward, and fair. Thirdly, people are the solution. You see, the virus is the problem. And there's only one group of people who can deal with that problem, and that is us, all of us, working for ourselves, working for others, and doing everything we can to keep this virus at bay and stop it surging into society. And that's a concerted effort needed by all of us, maintaining physical distance, wearing face protection like masks, Practicing incredible hygiene, whether we cough or whether we're touching surfaces, just keeping clean, keeping our hands clean. And then isolating ourselves the moment we feel ill, stay isolated for the duration that is required by local authorities, and not breaking that isolation, except perhaps to go and get a test because, of course, if the test is negative, then we can come out of isolation. But we've got to keep isolated. That's how you break the transmission. And then shielding people the most by protecting them. And actually also by vaccinating them. Because that's the purpose of vaccine, is to provide an immunological shield so that people are protected. But people are the solution. The virus is the problem. And that means ensuring that everybody everywhere is enabled to be part of that solution. To support that, we need public health. That's not the part of healthcare that's treating people in hospital. It's the part of healthcare that is actually looking after communities, making sure that anybody who's ill in the community can be identified, can be helped to isolate and offer the test, and their contacts can be traced, and their isolation can be supported. Public health is absolutely key. And then, to cap all this, I really believe that we need a global COVID response program that will deal with the dynamic nature of the pandemic and the emerging variants on the virus, whilst at the same time making sense of the multiple vaccines that are increasingly being offered. Because you can be pretty sure that variants will emerge will be resistant to some vaccines, but not to others. And therefore, understanding where the vaccines are and what they're being used for is key. And the only way to do that is through a global program. But I want to build more on the global program. I want it to be purposeful and focused on equity. I want it to be building public health for everyone. And I wanted to be helping people to be strong in the face of this.
and that means enabling people access to what they need for life fresh water food and shelter oh hang on but let's think about the food you see all over the world in 2020 and on into 2021 i've been hearing reports of people not being able to get the food they need for life because of covid because covid is restricting their ability to get out of earth. Because COVID is restricting their ability to meet other people. And for most people in our world to earn money through being in contact with others. If you're in the informal economy, especially, you absolutely must be able to move around in order to be able to get the cash you need for life. But if you can't get that cash, you can't get food. And if you can't get food, you go hungry. And if you grow hungry, after a bit, you will become malnourished. And if you become malnourished, you are more susceptible to this illness. That means a lot of attention now to the extent to which food systems everywhere are able to respond to hunger, are able to prevent malnutrition, particularly because in so many countries, young children are not going to school. And if they don't get to school, they get much less food in the day than they normally do. So food and nutrition has to be put at the center of the programmatic response to COVID. That's the point I want to get to, across to you. So let me revise. Number one, the pandemic is moving fiercely and surging all over the world. It's nowhere near over. Number two. Our response has to be based on purpose. Purpose meaning that everybody everywhere must benefit. And in particular, by moving fast, forward, fairly, so that the poorest people in our world are able to benefit. Remember, people are the response because the virus is the problem. So enable everybody everywhere to feel the responsibility that's on their shoulders and the pride that comes from working together to keep that virus at bay. We can't do that without fourth public health everywhere so that communities are protected. And fifth, all this needs a global program, a global COVID response program, which needs to include attention to food because without food, we're not nourished. Without being nourished, we're not able to bend against this disease and food as well as healthcare, they're part of that collective response that empowers me. Thank you for the chance to be with you today. I hope the Global Youth Summit goes really well. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not qualified to be there. But I'd be delighted to be in contact with you if you want to go on talking about this. I'm on LinkedIn and uh, very happy within limits, of course, to connect. Thank you very much indeed for the chance to be with you. Thank you, Dr. Navarro, for sharing your time with us. I am positive that the young people who are here with us right now have certainly learned a lot from your speech. So my takeaway from this is that we need to respond to COVID-19 with purpose, fast, forward, and fair way so that if the poorest people who are the most affected by this virus will benefit. So we and our collective efforts are the solutions to this enormous challenge. But only when there is dynamic global program that our efforts will take substantial effects. So thank you, Dr. David Navarro, for the importance of putting food and nutrition at the center of building programs against COVID-19. Thanks, Pal, for summarizing such a very beautiful speech in a concise and comprehensive manner. And if I may quote a particular um, line from Dr. Nabarro's speech that I love so much, it is to enable everybody everywhere to feel the responsibility that is on their shoulders and the pride that comes from working together to kick the virus away. It is really all about finding purpose in community and in unity. So for our participants, what are your thoughts about Dr. Nabarro's speech? Feel free to share this with us in the chat box, remembering that this is a safe and a brave space for everyone. So 
whether it's on the chat box or whether you're also trying to comment on our live YouTube live stream, feel free to share your thoughts on such an amazing speech, really. So we're just here waiting on the chat box to see what you will be responding with. And I'm sure a lot of our facilitators are very amazed also of what Dr. David Nabarro mentioned. Uh, Francine, am I audible? Hi, Denise. Yes, you are. Sorry to interrupt, but the video you are playing, the audio is not really clear. We have comments from the participants that the audio is not clear. Since I have the video, uh, can I play that? Yeah, sure thing. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, can, you please, can you please request Olivia to exit uh, the session and rejoin only with audio and camera? And I will present the video, OK? Thank you so Thank much. You. And that was, thank you, Kaniz, for that reminder. And thank you also to our participants for not only just listening, but also actively engaging with us by sharing with us in the chat box the different concerns that you're noticing and your thoughts about this session. So we will just wait in a few minutes to watch the video, but I'm sure you all heard what Pauline mentioned, her takeaways from the video, which also gave you a bit of a spoiler on what the video actually contains. And it's quite good to listen and re-listen to or re-watch the video. If you're planning to re-watch the video after this session, you can do so. So Kaniz and also Melissa will be sending a link to the video or to the entire presentation that we're using in the breakout session. So during your available time, you can preview through it and rewatch the video at your own pace. Francine, can you hear me? Hi, Melissa. Yes, I can hear you. I don't think we're going to play the video again because it's, it's 10 minutes long. So do you want to move on with the session? And we'll, we'll play the next videos so the sound is clearer. And as you said, we'll share the links with everybody so they can watch it in their own time. Yes, that would be great. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Kanez. So You're welcome. You can... To our participants, you can watch the video through the link that Kanez and Melissa will be sharing on the chat box and also on the YouTube live stream chat box. And you can view them at your available time. Now, Pauline, thank you also for facilitating that brief takeaway from Dr. Nabarro's speech. And to emphasize again what Pauline mentioned, it is when young people and everybody else in our community acts with purpose in a fast, forward, and fair way that everyone is involved, that we will be able to create an impactful change in society and eventually defeat the COVID-19 virus. You're right, Francine. So understandably, this is a very difficult time for all of us, made worse by being able to be physically there for our loved ones. So um, apologies for the inconvenience, but we should um, proceed with the session. So we shall be doing some learning activities to guide us in sifting through information regarding adolescent nutrition and well-being during a health crisis. So what are our learning activities all about? This is the, an easy to play word game where you might have to do some brain exercises as you choose between two options. So for the next slide in our presentation, we will have the this or that game. So Pauline, how do we play the this or that game? 
All right, so this is how we play. Mechanics for the game are as follows. So first, the facilitators will be showing two options on the screen. And then you, participants, have to select an option by typing the word this or the word that on the chat box. You know, it sounds pretty easy, I'm sure, for a lot of participants. But we hope you'll have a great time in selecting between the two options. But don't take too long to decide as we still have a few games up our sleeves. Now, on the next slide of the presentation, you'll see the first pair of options. All right. So what Kenins is showing on her screen is actually if you select this, it's a, um, fruits. And if you select that, it's a bundle of veggies. So which will you choose? Is it team fruits or are you for team veggies? So if you're fruits, once again, if you're for team fruits, just type this. And if you're for team veggies, just type that. As shown also on screen. All right. Okay, I could see some of our audience and also our participants commenting this. So many are for fruits, and there are those that are commenting that, but a bit less than those who are commenting this. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, just a quick um, trivia. Fruits are actually high in sugar and calories than vegetables. And I'm sure you also know that. And both are rich in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And it is perfectly all right to indulge yourself in fruits or veggies. But remember to eat both types of food in moderation. Now, Pauline, what's the next pair of options that we can see? All right, so I guess we can expect a little heated debate for our second slide. So um, can we have the next slide, please? All right, so we have tea and coffee. So if you prefer tea more than coffee, you type this. And if you prefer coffee more than tea, just type that. So don't hesitate to send in your answers or your comments on our chat box. So there for tea say this or if you're for coffee uh, type that so as i've mentioned a while ago it's going to be a heated debate so i see opposing um answers here right now i see lots of this and that's all right so um whatever it is that you prefer you have to know that new have shown that a variety of these may boost your immune system, fight of inflammation, and even ward of cancer and heart disease. While some groups provide more health advantages than others, there's plenty of evidence that regularly drinking tea can have a lasting impact on your wellness. So coffee can improve energy levels, make you smarter, I think that's great, helps burn fat, drastically improve physical performance, contains essential nutrients, and may lower your risk of type 2 diabetes and dementia. However, consuming too much caffeine can lead to jitteriness, anxiety, heart palpitations, and even exacerbated panic attacks. So if you're sensitive to caffeine and tend to become overstimulated, you may want to avoid coffee altogether. So that's another unwanted side effect of um, coffee. And then another is that it can disrupt sleep. So that's it for tea and coffee. Francine, what do we have next? Thanks, Colleen. I, I actually have a hard time. Yes, I, I can who is not presenting now, can you please exit and rejoin again when you have to talk so that the screen that I am sharing can be seen in a bigger screen, okay? All right, that would be great so that more can view it. Thank you, Kanez. And thank you also, Pauline, for sharing with us the options earlier. And I agree, that was quite a heated debate. A lot of the audience members are actually for um divided between tea and also coffee and that's all right no need to get into a more heated debate than we already <laughs> have today we can each take in both drinks at our own leisure and our third pair of options is 
Are you for this, which is the wheat bread, or are you for that, which is the white bread? Now, let us know in the chat box or also on YouTube live stream, which do you prefer? Is it this or is it that? Yeah, and one of our participants just mentioned that a lot of people are already commenting on YouTube that whether it's this or whether it's that. And keep the engagement going. It's so nice to see everyone getting involved. And I think we have a clear winner here. A majority of our participants are actually for this. They're for wheat bread. Now, what's so special about wheat bread and why is it winning? Well, just like oats and brown rice, wheat bread is actually rich in fiber and could actually lower your risk of heart disease, stroke, obesity, and diabetes. All good things, right? And it supports healthy digestion and reduces chronic inflammation. Whereas white bread is fortified with calcium. And did you know that four medium slices of white bread can actually substitute your daily calcium intake? But when does bread become not helpful? Is there such a thing? I think Pauline is nodding at me. It might be, or there might not be. Well, the thing is, Highly processed flour and additives are actually included in white packaged bread. And this is not to discriminate to those who answered that. It's perfectly all right to eat both kinds of um, or both types of bread. But eating too much of one kind of food and not in moderation can cause you to gain excess weight, have heart disease, and even incur diabetes. So as mentioned earlier during our first pair, always remember to eat everything in moderation. And now, Pauline, can you share with us what's the next pair of options that we have? All right. So for our fourth slide, uh, we have oats or cereal. So, um, you know, it's dinner time in the Philippines, but I can smell breakfast already. So um, we have oats and cereals. So if you are for oats, you type this. And if you're for cereal, type that. So again, don't hesitate to send in your answers. And let's see who's the winner. So this part also is uh, one of a heated debate. So I see a lot of this and a lot of that. But at this point, I, I see more that than this. All right. So thank you guys for um, participating um, in our fourth slide. So actually, oats are among the healthiest grains on earth. So they are gluten-free whole grain and a great source of important vitamins, minerals, fiber, and antioxidants. Studies show that oats and oatmeal have many health benefits. This include weight loss, low blood sugar, uh, reduced risk of heart disease. So cereals, on the other hand, are an excellent source of carbohydrates. So it's a significant source of protein, a good source of B group vitamins, including folate. And it's also a good source of many minerals such as iron, magnesium, copper, phosphorus, and zinc. So when you're trying to lose weight, you might reach for low calorie cereals to start your day. So while these breakfast foods may be low in calories, they are often loaded with added sugars. Plus, many low-calorie kinds of cereals lack the protein and healthy fats that help you feel satisfied. So we have that for our breakfast. Um, how about for our, I guess, last pair, Francine? What do we have? Thank you, Pauline. And unfortunately, we're down to the last pair of this or that. But don't feel sad. I see some very sad emojis or reactions popping up because we still have a lot in store for you. So our next option as shown on screen is if you're for this, it's a flavored sandwich spread. Or if you're for that, it's a fruit jam. Now, which do you prefer for your sandwich spread or your bread? Is it a flavored sandwich spread or a fruit jam? Or maybe you're one of those people who actually like PB&J, and that's good too. Peanut butter and jelly. Now, I can see someone saying always this, so always her flavored sandwich spread. And there is someone who said that, which is for fruit jams. 
Oh no, I think this is the heated debate, not the tea or <laughs> coffee kind. I know, right, Francine? We've come to the real debate. And there are even options that said both. Well, that's a good idea. Why not both? Why pick between this or that? It's a good negotiation. Thank you, so much. thank you so much for picking both. Actually, nice to root for both teams. So a jam is actually mash fruit. And you know that's the difference between it and the spread, which is anything that you can literally spread on, let's say, bread or even crackers. And spreads are added as well as jams to enhance the flavor or the texture of the food. So you don't want bland bread or just simply white bread. You also want to add more flavor on it. And it's great that you are able to choose and make up your mind between these options or pair of options. And we are fortunate enough actually to have options to choose from. And the reason why we have this game is to drive home a critical point. It's that the World Bank was able to gather through rapid phone surveys during the COVID-19 pandemic that 48 countries were experiencing varied levels of food insecurity due to a bottleneck in the food chain stemming from health restrictions set into place by their respective national governments. What does this mean? It means that they are unable to access healthy food, they are unable to access food that fits their dietary requirement, and they are unable to eat the food that they need to continue surviving. And young people in particular have to bear the brunt of these changes as they have specific dietary requirements necessary for their growth. All right, so that was quite informative, Francine. Thank you very much. So whether you're for this or maybe for that, this game provided us with in-depth information about the situation on the ground. So this will go a long way in the next part of our session. But before that, let's have a short break. So here are a few reminders which you can see on screen that the break we shall go into will last for 15 minutes. Now, don't feel worried again because we have some activities lined up just for you. And once you go on a break, feel free to take a bio break, um, do some simple movement exercises to keep you up and running. And you can also munch on it because I'm sure that you all got a bit hungry just by viewing those pictures. And we'll keep the breakout session room open and play some videos that you can watch. Don't forget to be back by eight o'clock GMT or 815 GMT for the next segment. So thank you everyone for tuning in to the first part of Mission Nutrition. And let's watch the next two videos on the perfectionism pandemic and also the testimony of a COVID-19 teen survivor. So just tune into your screens and don't forget to expand your screen by clicking the bottom right button. So let's start with the first video and feel free to take a break, get up, um, munch on a few snacks, get some water to keep you up and running throughout the entire time that we're having the break. And also, while you're all having a break, the facilitators and I will go over a few of the comments that we'll see here on the chat box and also the Q&A portion. So here's a comment from Chowri Tony to Renima Villa. Um, it's a fun session. Thank, thank you so much, Chowri. I just have to say, we also had fun listening to your answers on the this or that game and hearing your um, thoughts on it, your ideas, your opinions. Thank you so much for attending Mission Nutrition. And of course, we're not yet done. So we hope you'll still continue for the next part. And so Otka here has a question. So let me just read her question. My question is about the app now. What action is urgent? What is the first action to do in nutrition improvement? Thank you. Well, Satra, thank you for raising that question. And we panelists or the facilitators group are very inspired by what you're doing, raising those questions that are critical to us, especially now during the COVID-19 pandemic, when all of our resources are being devoted to addressing the rising cases of COVID-19, um, that we aren't even able to take a break and look into related issues such as um, 
rising rates also of adolescent malnutrition. Now, the first action that we can do is in nutrition improvement is, of course, to get the word out that there's actually food insecurity in your community and maybe your household or maybe your country. And getting the word out is critical and raising awareness is critical so that more action can be devoted towards addressing that particular issue, which is nutrition improvement. And from there, it is then vital to mobilize your community, to mobilize young people, which is also what we are doing right now in the global youth mobilization, to mobilize young people, to mobilize decision makers, to take concrete actions to strengthen, whether it means strengthen existing regulations or existing laws about nutrition and well-being, and to fortify healthcare access in your community. And for my fellow facilitators, feel free to add on um, my answer to Saotra's question. And feel free also to the audience to start sending in more questions, to add in your thoughts, and to just vibe with us while waiting for the session break to end. So for the next slide to show the perfectionism pandemic, Okay, we're still trying to get the video on, but let me just read a few more chats from the chat box. Here's Benjamin saying, see you after the break. Just wanted to see you guys are very enthusiastic to listen. Thank you so much, Benjamin. And I'm glad that you are able to enjoy this brief session that we have. And also Tamina Vinte mentioned learning with fun, best experience in the summit till now. This really warms our heart. It's absolutely phenomenal what it is that we're doing right now and it's really amazing that a lot of young people are coming together from all over the world to take part in making sustainable action especially now it's for nutrition in our session and there's from Toto Fazi uh, Toto Zafi I really like or enjoy this session thank you and we hope you'll be able to stick around okay so we have this video playing. It's about the perfectionism pandemic. And you can expand the video. We can leave it on full screen by clicking the expand button on the bottom right corner of your screen. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Tamina. We also noticed there was no audio in the video earlier, and we'll rectify that in a bit. And let's view another question from the Q&A. So, yeah, I think it's Agatha Sibolska. She raised her hand, and she also mentioned here some concerns about the presentation being quite small, or maybe there's no audio. So for the portion where you might see the screen or the presentation might be a bit small, again, just go to the expand button at the bottom right corner of your screen and click it and the entire presentation shall appear in full screen for you. And about the audio concern, we are now working on it. Thank you so much to our participants for mentioning it. And we'll be showing the video in a jiffy.
So just a brief overview of why we're showing a video on the perfectionist. Is, I think so. They really do need to All right, now it's open uh, more. They talk about mindfulness, anything that they can do to distract away from themselves. I think if they can find something that helps them connect with other people, this is a general piece of advice for anyone. You know, doing something that benefits others is a way to feel better about yourself. We don't do enough of that in life. And there are opportunities right now to be doing that sort of thing by reaching out, even if it's online, to people you think might just need somebody to connect with them. Right, that was the first video from York University and what it talks about mainly, and this is the overview that I was supposed to give earlier, is there is a rising need for perfectionism during today, the pandemic. I'm so pleased to be with you today at the Youth Summit and to focus on nutrition and COVID. Uh, as you know, I'm David Navarro. I'm a public health doctor, but I've spent the last 15 years really immersed in food and what we call food systems. And I find there are some very important relationships between COVID and food, and that's going to be my focus. So let me just start with my analysis of where the world is in relation to COVID. And I'm going to offer you five words and they begin with P. First of all, pandemic. Then purpose. After that, people. Fourthly, public health. And fifth, program. And then as I talk about program, I'm... Good day. I'm so pleased to be with you today. COVID and food. And that's going to be my focus. So let me just start with my analysis of where the world is in relation to COVID. And I'm going to offer you five words, and they begin with P. First of all, pandemic, then purpose. After that, people. Fourthly, public health, and fifth, program. And then as I talk about program, I'm going to go in, in greater detail to the nutrition issues. First of all, pandemic. Well, I don't know whether you've studied the figures that show numbers of people with COVID that are reported to the World Health Organization each day, but I'm gonna tell you that in the last week, more people in the world were reported as having COVID than ever before. Over 4 million people reported with the disease last week. That is an enormous number. And I want to stress, therefore, that nobody should imagine that this pandemic is anywhere near over. It is still very active an extremely dangerous virus that's very easy to underestimate, continues to move all over the world with spikes of disease that become surges and then turn into swirling outbreaks with people getting very sick, hospitals being filled up and governments being forced as a last resort to impose significant restrictions on people's movements in order to try to stop spread. And that's what's happening. And it's particularly intense in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, as well as in countries in Latin America, particularly Brazil, but also some of Brazil's neighbors. And the reality is that these spikes of disease are occurring without any kind of seasonal pattern. There's a period when there's not much disease and then suddenly numbers of cases build up and you get the very extreme situation that we have in India right now. 
So this is the pandemic and what to do about it. Well, my second point is we should respond with purpose. I'll tell you why. Uh, this virus is not going away anytime soon. And the fact is that the pandemic will continue to move around the world. There's no hope of being able to protect people everywhere through immunization until well into 2022. And that requires us to be lucky with supplies of vaccine. And instead, the purpose has to be to ensure that as this virus continues to be a constant threat for humanity, collectively, we can respond. And we can respond in ways that are fair. We can respond in ways that are looking forward. And we can respond in ways that are rapid. Because all over the world, poor people everywhere are experiencing incredible challenges as a result of COVID. They're becoming poorer. Their lives are becoming more challenging. And given that it's poor people being affected the worst, it's absolutely essential for forward responses to be fair. And that's the purpose. Fast, forward and fair. Thirdly, people are the solution. You see, the virus is the problem. And there's only one group of people who can deal with that problem, and that is us, all of us, working for ourselves, working for others, and doing everything we can to keep this virus at bay and stop it surging into societies. And that's a concerted effort needed by all of us, maintaining physical distance, wearing face protection like masks, practicing incredible hygiene, whether we cough or whether we're touching surfaces, just keeping clean and keeping our hands clean. And then isolating ourselves the moment we feel ill and staying isolated for the duration that is required by local authorities and not breaking that isolation, except perhaps to go and get a test. Because of course, if the test is negative, then we can come out of isolation. But we've got to keep isolated. That's how you break transmission. And then shielding people who are most at risk by protecting them. And actually also by vaccinating them, because that's the purpose of the vaccines, is to provide an immunological shield so that people are protected. The people are the solution, the virus is the problem, and that means ensuring that everybody everywhere is enabled to be part of that solution. To support that, we need public health. That's not the part of healthcare that's treating people in hospital. It's the part of healthcare that is to communities, making sure that anybody who's ill in the community can be identified and can be helped to isolate and offered a test and their contacts can be traced and their isolation can be supported. Public health is absolute key. And then to cap all this, I really believe that we need a global COVID response program that will deal with the dynamic nature of the pandemic and the emerging variants on the virus whilst at the same time making sense of the multiple vaccines that are increasingly being offered. Because you can be pretty sure that variants will emerge that will be resistant to some vaccines, but not to others. And therefore, understanding where the vaccines are and what they're being used for is key. And the only way to do that is through a global programme. But I want to build more on the global programme. I want it to be purposeful, and focused on equity. I wanted to be building public health for everyone. And I wanted to be helping people to be strong in the face of this pandemic. And that means enabling people to access to what they need for life, fresh water, food and shelter. Oh, hang on, but let's think about food. You see, all over the world, in 2020, 
and on into 2021, I've been hearing reports of people not being able to get the food they need for life because of COVID. Because COVID is restricting their ability to get out and earn. Because COVID is restricting their ability to meet other people. And for most people in our world, you earn money through being in contact with others. If you're in the informal economy, especially, you absolutely must be able to move around in order to be able to get the cash you need for life. But if you can't get that cash, you can't get food. And if you can't get food, you go hungry. And if you go hungry, after a bit, you will become malnourished. And if you become malnourished, you are more susceptible to this illness. That means a lot of attention now to the extent to which food systems everywhere are able to respond to hunger, are able to prevent malnutrition, particularly because in so many countries, young children are not going to school. And if they don't get to school, they get less food in the day than they normally do. So food and nutrition to be put at the center of the programmatic response to COVID. That's the point I want to get to you, across to you. So let me revise. Number one, the pandemic is moving fiercely and surging all over the world. It's nowhere near over. Number two, our response has to be based on purpose. Purpose meaning that everybody everywhere must benefit. And in particular, by moving fast, forward, fairly, so that the poorest people in our world are able to benefit. Remember, people are the response because the virus is the problem. So enable everybody everywhere to feel the responsibility that's on their shoulders and the pride that comes from working together to keep that virus at bay. They can't do that without fourth public health everywhere so that communities are protected. And fifth, all this needs a global program, a global COVID response program which needs to include attention to food because without food, we're not nourished. Without being nourished, we're not able to bend against this disease. And food, as well as healthcare, they're part of that collective response that impacts people. Thank you for the chance to be with you today. I hope the Global Youth Summit goes really well. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not qualified to be there. But I'd be delighted to be in contact with you if you want to go on talking about this. I'm on LinkedIn and uh, very happy within limits, of course, to connect. Thank you very much indeed for the chance to be with you. All right. So and that um, is, yeah, we've, no, just, um, we've just replayed Dr. Navarro's video and I hope it was clear. Back to mission nutrition meaningful break and for our last learning activity this on memory for our gallery walk with a twist that's right we'll on screen pictures of youth-led initiatives on malnutrition mainly we're taking it from our personal experiences in the girl powered nutrition program and provide tried and tested tips on making impactful and sustainable change on a personal and even on a communal level. If you have any questions during the gallery walk, kindly type them once again in the chat box or in the Q&A, and our facilitators here will get back to you about it. So for our first slide or first gallery that we're going to enter, we have Olivia to talk about the activities done in the Philippines. Hi, Olivia. Okay, Olivia is on mute. And she's, she's, okay. All right, Miss Kimi, can you hear me, Miss Francine? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks, Olivia. Thank you so much, Miss Francine. Again, I'm Olivia from the Philippines. And here are the initiatives powered nutrition advocacy champion in our country. 
But before that, let us let us see or let us virtually see your fancy and beautiful pose using your hands and just clap your hands like this so that we are moving and not being lousy. Okay, so I think you are clapping your hands and with that, let's proceed. First in line, are, we have the advocacy champions of the Northern Luzon region and the Philippines who led the call to ban the unhealthy food and beverages in schools. They organized a poster making contest as part of their campaign that aims to raise awareness of the existing Department of Education Order Number 13. This order number prohibits the sales of unhealthy food and beverages in schools vicinity. A lot uh, how, uh, because a lot of schools are in following this that greatly affects the food choices of the students, mainly consisting of unhealthy one. The winning posters of the chosen chosen by the advocacy champions were digitized and put up in the various schools within the province of Pangasinan in response to the uh, to their aim of raising awareness of the Department of Education order. Okay, that's it for the first slide. But before we proceed, uh, let's see, let's see your hands and let's clap it again. Uh, all right. So with that, let's move on. And I can see that everyone. I can feel that everyone is as excited as we are in knowing other countries' initiative. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this event. And let's proceed to the second slide for the Philippines. Okay. Next. It is also initiated by the Northern Luzon region to put your best for forward, forward social media accounts. This aims uh, to promote better eating habits and to help simplify food labels, especially for girls and young women. Eventually, the social media accounts uh, for this project became the primary online educational platform of all the six regions in the Philippines where the activities the infographics and other educational materials are being posted. As you can also see on the other side of the slide is the digital magazine or the e-magazine created by the advocacy champions. This e-magazine sums up and gives us, not gives us and also the readers, not just a glimpse, but a discussion of the progr progress of the girl powered nutrition here in the Philippines. It includes the the regional campaign, the launching of GPN badge, uh, the Nutrition Month 2020, and many more. And if you were interested and you want to read the whole copy for this e-magazine, let me drop the link later on in the chat box. That's all for the Philippines. I hope you get inspired by these initiatives. And we are looking forward for your future projects. But before that, but before we proceed to the next slide, let me see your beautiful hands clapping, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Olivia. And it was a great tour around the Philippines. And now, thank you for clapping your hands, everybody. Let's move to the next country, quite near to the Philippines, mind you. It's in Sri Lanka. And let's welcome Shara to talk about what Girl Guides in Sri Lanka have been doing to facilitate adolescent nutrition or access to better health care for young people. Hi, Shara. Let's go. So again, I'm Shara, and I am I am from the Philippines, and I welcome you to Sri Lanka. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, Sri Lanka's nutritional status of children under five years of age is poor. However, girl fat nutrition is driven to improve their status. In fact, the Anukodai Roman Catholic Tamil mix is located in the female district of the northern province of Sri Lanka under the umbrella of the GPN. They decided to work together as a team to create a girl-powered nutrition school canteen. This project received resounding support from their guide leader, the school principal, and Sri Lanka Girl Guide Association. In relation to this, funds will be given through the Community Action Fund component of the Girl-Powered Nutrition. 
according to one action fan participant, it was really enjoyable and beneficial, especially to students who cannot afford to buy foods. The canteen provides healthy and nutritious scraps and meals to the students. However, due to the rise of COVID-19, all schools were closed and so did the canteen. Even if it has to close, girls still continue their planning for the future programs and projects for Sri Lanka. That's all for Sri Lanka. But before we proceed to the next slide, snap your fingers so that you can proceed to the next session. Next county. Thank you so much. All right. How many snaps did you do? I think I did three. And here's someone from Madagascar who can talk about what they have been doing in their country. Hi, Narendra. Hi, hello everyone. So welcome to Madagascar. I am Narendra and let me tell you, Stampin is a major public health and development center in Madagascar. More than 47% of children under five years old are suffering from Stampin. So their power nutrition, girls have been taking action by promoting rainbow play to the community. As part of this, in early 2020, the Food Festival gathered about 300 community leaders and decision makers, and more than 1,000 members of the community and public speakers, and many more were reached through media channels on that day. Advocacy champions have raised awareness about girls and adolescent nutrition, and decision makers have promised to make nutrition one of those priority areas. The food festival culminated in a colorful and lively carnival march to the city of Mara. Now, raise your hand and let's pro proceed to the next slide. Girl powered nutrition is not only about advocacy, we educate also girls and young women so that they are aware of the importance of good nutrition and they are able to make healthy choices. After that, girls have the skills, confidence, and resources they need to lead nutrition so that they can influence also their community. This is one of the community projects for GP Hand Action Hub Fund that girls did in the northern west region of Madagascar in the city of Mahasanga. They chose to identify pretty large on the beach and the girls' shelter in the main city because these locations are very busy with lots of community members and tourists and where the rice and healthy food and are, are the most prevalent. They found it difficult to talk to the center, to the sellers and convince them to introduce the principle into their business. Through meetings and events, the practice in trying to help the community understand why selling healthy food is not only good for their business, but also a way for them to help other communities. As you blink your eyes, we can move to the next slide. Thanks, Narendra. That was very, very informative and at the same time, very inspiring for all of us. Now let's move on to the last country, but don't forget to blink or maybe just do a wink at it. So we can move on to the next slide where we are now and where we are is actually in Tanzania and Mary Divine will share something with us about the work that they've been doing there. All right, thank you very much, Francine. All right, so we are amazed and have learned as well from the initiatives and impactful projects on nutrition by the youth from the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and Madagascar. Now we are down to the last country that we will feature. Our Mayor Divine Divili Luna from the Philippines and I will take you to Tanzania. All right, so the first two pictures show Valentine, a 20-year-old girl guide from the Tanga region. And as a girl guide, she fights for better nutrition and the empowerment of adolescent girls and women. Valentine was transformed through her experiences in GPN, especially in developing a campaign to prevent iron deficiency anemia among girls in her country. So her voice resonates with passion and energy when she talks about her future plans and Valentine wants to become a gynecologist to keep helping adolescent girls and women. 
So for the one big picture, she is Najma Mohammed, a 17-year-old girl, power, nutrition, and focus champion in Tanzania, who gets school meals on the agenda in her camp- country. Imagine a 17-year-old. All right, so encouraged by her parents, she started developing leadership skills at an early age. And Najma's first thoughts were to establish a student's forum for change, a small club for her peers to discuss nutrition challenges. Through it, she organized a fierce debate to argue for necessary changes in nutrition policies. After successfully convincing the headmistress of her school, she was granted permission to organize nutrition talks for the entire school every week and even travel to other schools to debate and discuss nutrition. One of the most important events in Najma's life was when, on behalf of the Girl Scouts, she had a chance to address the Prime Minister of Tanzania. Prior to the meeting, the girls developed a list of statements and policy asks. They included establishing nutrition as a standalone subject in the school curriculum as well as introducing complimentary meals in every school. All right, so now tap your feet to proceed. Yes, uh, I believe that you all tap your feet. Okay, so now these are... For the next slide, we have uh, these girls are Sekala Kalinga, 29, and Zulfa Said, 19. And uh, together with her, yeah, together with their GPN advocacy champions based in the town of Lindi in Tanzania, they took part in advocacy training in November 2018, and it was here that they developed their advocacy action plan, lobbying for the provision of food in schools, and they managed to arrange a meeting with their regional leaders to get their plan into action. The regional leaders then called a meeting with all district educational officers and some heads of uh, schools in the region and ordered uh, them to seriously consider providing food to students at their schools. Their persistence paid off, and during his Wikia Elimu closing speech, the Honorable Godfrey Zambi not only paid tribute to the Girl Guides, but directed all schools to start providing meals. So, um, Go- Honorable Godfrey Zambi stated, Girl Guides are raising awareness about good nutrition for girls, and they have helped us to understand how poor nutrition could impact performance at school. I'm today giving a directive to all schools to start providing meals to students with immediate effect. Now, these only show that one small act could have a great impact. Thank you very much, Francine. And that's all for Tanzania. Thank you all so um, divine. And yes, Pauline, welcome back to our session. Yes. Hi, Francine. So um, thank you to our facilitators for taking us through a gallery walk. It's really nice to see how young people um, are mobilizing across the globe um, in order to build a healthier world. So that was such an enlightening and engaging experience. Don't you think, Francine? Absolutely, Pauline. I mean, I never imagined travel to a lot of countries in such a short amount of time and actually do simple exercises a while ago while our fellow facilitators olivia divine shara and arindra were talking i found myself clapping snapping blinking and actually moving my upper entire upper body as i was really excited to view and actually move to the next slide and see what more pictures we could find and i can see here a lot of our members in the audience are actually um putting up heart reactions and thumbs up and let us share a heart reaction to them too here's us virtually sharing a heart reaction to all of you and as much as we've enjoyed our time here I wouldn't leave if given the chance. I would like to stay here the entire time. We've actually reached the end of our session. That's right, Francine. So to cap our session, let us listen to Narendra Andrea Mahefalison for our closing remarks. There is a quote saying, you are what you eat. But I will have what you eat today determines who you will be tomorrow. You want to be healthy, then eat healthy. You want to go to school, you have to be healthy, then eat healthy. You want to achieve something, eat them, eat healthy. Eat a rainbow plate every day, and your daily life will be as colorful as the rainbow. Nutrition, there is no magic. We create the magic because we all have the power to do and bring the change now and tomorrow. So now we all have the mission, nutrition. If you are ready for this mission, right? Miss Mission Nutrition in the chat box. Thank you, 
late 2019, the COVID pandemic has rapidly spread around the world and has profound implications for food security and nutrition. COVID-19 has put us in different situations. For some, they have managed to improve their habits, their diet, their healthy habits, but for some, the little that they had have been removed from them. According to the UNICEF, the FAO, the WFP, and the WHO, an additional of 6.7 million children over the world are over the age to become wealthy due to the pandemic. That can be more, and that is only children. Adolescents are victims of malnutrition too, but adolescent nutrition isn't taken as a priority yet. Statistics about adolescent nutrition are limited, and there are only few actions that are taken for them. We want to change that because adolescent nutrition is as important as children and women nutrition. But we can't do it alone. We don't have to have a nutrition pandemic after this. So, so from wherever you are, take action. Start with what you have. Reach for more, research for more information about nutrition in your own country. Share and put your, in practice your takeaways from today's session. Reach decision makers through social media or by writing a letter or just talking to decision makers. Support your community. Create a green garden. Change your eating habits if needed. Anything, you can do anything, but just create the dynamic and initiate the movement. Add your voice and together our voice will be louder. As Dr. Navarro said, we are the response. We are the response. We are the solution. You can always visit the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts website to know more about girl powered nutrition and what the girls have been doing. And remember, your first weapon to fight against COVID-19 is healthy food. So eat healthy and stay healthy. Thank you for joining us and the interactive privacy session and we wish you all the wonderful time. I am Marin and we are Salso, an advocacy champion in Madagascar. Thank you so much, Narendra. I love the quotes that you mentioned, particularly, let me just quote one thing Narendra said, you are what you eat, and that is very true. But before we actually informally close our session today, let me just read a few of the chat um, messages in the box. We have Putri saying, Narendra, I'm so proud of you. Also, of course, you're so proud of Narendra. That was a very eloquent speech. And we have here Chowdhury saying such amazing initiatives and Roberto also commenting many amazing and inspiring projects. Um, Putri um, also mentioned what a great energy we have. And really, thank you so much for all your wonderful messages. It really warms our hearts. And just before we really do end, let Francine, me just um, address Chadri's question. Sorry to hello. interrupt. We have a participant who want who has raised their hand and want to come on stage. Would you like her? Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, Canis. I think um, it's Chadri. Okay, hello. Yes. All right. And just before we really do end, let Francine, me just um, address Chadri's question. Hello. Sorry to hello. Enter. We have a participant who want, who has raised their hand and want to come on stage. Would you like her? Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, Candice. I think um, it's Chowdhury. Okay, hello. Hello. Yes. Okay, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, thank Before you. Really do end, let me just um, address Chowdhury. We have a participant who, want, who has raised their hand and want to come on stage. Would you like her? Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, Canon. I think uh, it's Charlie. Okay, hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Am I, I think, I think yes, you are. Frosty was only question. So uh, my question was, uh, we know food alteration is a big issue. So uh, how, what role does it play uh, for us to ensure nutrition? And uh, what roles can we play to uh, tackle it? I think, I think yes, it's uh, possible.
Okay, thank you so much, Tatari, for your question. And she also placed it here in the Q&A. Her question, and to repeat it for everyone, is um, what is the role of food adulteration in nutrition and what is the first step in addressing it? So this is a very new term. I, be, I mean, it's a legal term that's been in use for quite some time, but not really everyone is familiar with it. So to get everyone up to speed, food adulteration is when a food product fails to meet legal standards because there is an addition of another substance in the food item causing it to increase in quantity, hence the term adulteration, um, from the raw or the processed food, which may actually result to the loss of the actual quality of the food item. So to answer Chowdhury's question, it does not help in, in, in increasing adolescent nutrition or even nutrition in general. What, is, what it does is actually um, limit the capacity of food producers to actually produce quality food that we can take in as consumers. And the first step to go about this is it pays to be informed as this is what we've mentioned earlier about um, adolescent nutrition and malnutrition as an issue, it pays to be informed, it pays to be aware of what's happening, why is it happening, where is it happening, and get in touch with authorities if you spot a food that is um, considered adulterated or altered to increase in quantity and failing food standards. So yeah, I think the first point of action is to really be informed to direct it or to connect with um, local authorities to report this problem. And the next step that you can do is to be more aware of your food labels. So this is something that in Grill Power Nutrition we're drilled in. They taught us um, at a short period of time that we were there, you have to learn what food labels are. You have to know how to read food labels. It is a must for us to recognize where food labels are. And if you see a food product that does not have food labels and you don't know what's inside that product, it's advisable not to buy that product anymore because you don't know what's inside those products. You might be allergic to it even more so. And how about our other facilitators? What can you say about um, Chaudhry's um, question regarding adulterated food or food adulteration? So I think our, the other facilitators are also in agreement with what we've mentioned about um, first being aware of what food adulteration uh, is. Francine, reporting we have another participant who has raised our hand should we take that yeah sure thing thank you oh. Candice, for sharing that I think she's to connect. You can continue, and uh, uh, I will tell you when she can join. Okay. All right. So I think um, the person who is raising her hand is also Saotra. So Saotra here has mentioned a question we tackled earlier, but to also get it up to speed, get everyone up to speed. Saotra's question is: Now, what is the first point of action? to do in nutrition improvement. Now I'm gonna hand over the stick or the mic to other facilitators so they can also share in or add in their opinions. So who would want to go first? I think I saw Narendra earlier opening her camera. Narendra, would you have some words about this? Uh, so as I say, there is no magic. We create the magic. So we start with what we have. We start with on what we can work. As for now, for example, we are in lockdown, we can't go anywhere. We have social media, luckily, so we can raise our voices on social media. We can share with our friends, with our community also, what is healthy food and what is a rainbow place, so they can learn from what we are sharing. When it's open, when it's more open, we can do more, but we start with the little that we have, with that thinking that I can't do anything because we can do something. Yeah. Thank you, Narendra. And I think that's the last of our 
um, questions that we need to answer. We have covered Chowdhury's question. We have also covered Sautra's question. And I feel like a lot are trying not to say goodbye right now and not trying to end the session. But this formally concludes our session for today. Thank you so much, everyone, for choosing to go on a mission for nutrition. Let us grow, nourish, and sustain together for her world and ours. So thank you, everyone, and we hope to see you soon. Um, feel free to connect with any one of us and you have any questions, um, any ideas, thoughts. We're here to answer it and also work on making more progress and making more change in our world. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Benjamin. That's really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. And thank you to all our participants who have been here with us since the start of the session. So thank you for joining us today or tonight, wherever you are in the world. And we hope you well. Thank you, Fikri. Thank you, Satya. Thank you, Marie, Anita, and everyone. Um, thank you. And I hope you have a great day today. Thank you also, Dana, and thank you, Lucia. Thank you also, Amanda. And yes, I like reading all of your comments on our chat box. It's really um, fun to read and very um, heartwarming. Thank you also to everyone who's commenting on our chat box or who's on YouTube. Thank you for sending lots of hearts. And as we did earlier, we're sending you a virtual heart. And we hope you're receiving it right now, wherever you are in the world. And if you're interested to further your um, initiatives or your participation on addressing malnutrition at large, kindly connect with WAG's World on the Girl Powered Nutrition Program. So we have about a minute left before the live stream officially closes. Thank you so much also. I think what the Zafi mentioned here was really inspiring and we are equally inspired to hear your insight as well. Thanks, Amanda. You're also awesome as well. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun.
All right, we're finally done with the live stream. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. That was quite a journey. I'm sure everyone's hearts were, were literally stopping each time. And we're, it's like beating in triple time as well. Thank you so much to all the facilitators. And also, thank you so much to uh, Melissa and Candice for facilitating in the moderation of YouTube and also um, sharing our screen. And thank you to Joseph, Chase, and everyone who's here. We couldn't have done this without you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Thanks. It was thank great you. To be here. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you very much. So, thank you. And please stay safe and take care. Take care, everyone. So, just before we leave, can we have like our first group photo <laughs> since we went in here and um, did the session? So, it's going to be I'm um, doing a print screen. Hi, Candice. It's so nice to meet you. Okay, so Hi. everyone. Um, uh, take a look at your camera and smile. Wait, you or should I leave? Oh. Should, should I stay uh, in the photo or should I oh, leave? Yeah, of course. Yes, please do stay. Okay. Okay. So, Kylie, take a look at your camera and in one, two, and three. Yay. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, I think we can now formally leave the session. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon again, Arindra. I'm sure we'll see each other soon. Bye. Bye, everyone.